This is E.T. And these two men, Louis Sear and Paul Anderson, are each considered by different factions the strongest man, at least of the modern era, and not including chemically enhanced athletes. Although it is possible, but extremely unlikely, that both men could have artificially boosted testosterone. For example, way back in 1889, Major League Baseball pitcher Pud Galvin was administered regular injections of an extract from animal testes. And in the early 1930s, anabolic steroids were isolated and artificially produced. Considering the limited knowledge and availability of steroids, we can pretty well guarantee that each man, Sear and Anderson, was natural. Let's examine the particulars of Sear and Anderson. Louis Sear, born 1863, died 1912, age 49, cause of death, nephritis. Paul Anderson, born 1932, died 1994, he was age 62, and he too died of nephritis. Now it is possible that large amounts of protein may have contributed to both men's deaths. Louis Sear stood around 5 feet 8 to 5 feet 9 inches, by the way, I'm going to write in the metric measurements. Louis Sear weighed between 260 and 365 pounds. Paul Anderson's height was put at between 5 foot 8 and 5 feet 10 and a half. Now, it is possible that the extremely heavy weights lifted by each man could have resulted in pressed vertebrae resulting in different measurements. Anderson weighed more than Sear. In his competitive days, he was between 360 and 400 pounds. Louis Sear dominated strength sports during the decade before and after the turn of the 20th century, where Paul Anderson dominated the 1950s into the mid-1960s. Both men possessed very large torsos and obviously plenty of fast twitch muscle fibers. Both men worked outdoors doing heavy labor when they were young. Now that's something common among the legends of strength. So if any young men are watching now and you don't want to work, get out there and do some hard work and sweat. Both men were so popular, so dominant, during their respective eras, that exaggeration of their strength feats clouds our ability to determine what, well, what did they actually lift. Let's take a look and try to figure it all out. Using first the Olympic style lifts, until the 1960s they consisted of the clean and jerk, the clean and press, and the snatch lift. Amateur competition of these lifts existed during both men's eras, but only Anderson lifted officially. He, in fact, was the Olympic champion and world record holder. Paul Anderson could clean and jerk 436 pounds. He could not participate as an amateur after 1956 because he did professional sports, but once he did an exhibition, and this was when the Russian champion <clears throat> was performing here in the United States, the Russian pressed 350 pounds, Paul Anderson jumped on the stage wearing street clothes and pressed 425 pounds, and he did it twice. Louis Sear never lifted in the first modern Olympics of 1896 or later. And that was probably because he was already a professional. And number two, the games were mostly comprised of the world's rich and well-born. 
Louis Sear did, however, perform near-equivalent lifting. In 1896, the year of the first Olympics, modern Olympics, he clean and jerked 347 pounds. Now, this was quite something because he had no real practice in this, so very little form. Consider that Vigo Jensen's record lift in the 1896 Olympic Games was 246 pounds. The accuracy of Sears lift, however, cannot be verified, but we do know that he lacked certain advantages that modern-day lifters such as Anderson had. For instance, the York Olympic barbell with the knurled bar and the ball-bearing collars. We can say, however, that Anderson, despite advantages, was the clear winner, at least in the clean and press, by nearly 100 pounds. Then there was the back lift. Both men did that. This is where a man will bend over with his knees bent and his hands braced and place his back against a weighted platform and then raise it. Louis Sear was reported to have lifted between 3,600 and 4,000 pounds, but we do know that that weight was only guessed at. What they did at the time was estimate the weight of the men sitting on the platform, and it seemed to observers of the day that they exaggerated the weight. Paul Anderson's back lift is listed in the 1981 Guinness Book of Records, and it was over three tons. We're talking 6,000 pounds. But he did not lift it far off the ground. In fact, E.T. saw it when he was a youngster on television, and it came off the ground just a tiny bit, whereas Louis Sear was reported to have lifted it at least a few inches. But the huge difference between the 4,000 pounds, probably exaggerated, of Louis Sear and the verified 6,000 pounds lifted by Anderson must put Anderson on the winner's dais. Both men performed the one-armed dumbbell press. Paul Anderson, you can see him here pushing 300 pounds, up twice, Louis Sear, in 1892, pressed with one arm, 275 pounds, about 25 pounds less. And he did it before 5,000 people in London. Now, that's less than Anderson, but Sears reported 36 repetitions with a 162-pound dumbbell was something never even attempted by Anderson. Although, again, there's no verification of that weight that Sear lifted. Our problem from here is de in determining the strongest man is that many of the particular lifts for which each man was famous were never performed by the other. Paul Anderson's power lifts were unofficial records. He did them before the, there was any official sanctioning body. Uh, he bench-pressed over 600 pounds. He could squat at least 1,200 pounds. Now, his famous one-and-a-half-ton Las Vegas squats, even then, were uh, doubted, and uh, we're not even going to consider those. Paul Anderson deadlifted 820 pounds. While Louis Sear had never heard of a bench press. In fact, the bench press did not come into vogue until the 1950s, and uh, it's a terribly unutilitarian lift, and it was promoted by magazine publishers who wanted to sell benches. Whatever. Louis Sear never performed squats either. Paul Anderson considered the squat the foundation of strength, and I think he was right. Nor did Louis Sear perform what we call today a deadlift. Although Sear was reported to have pulled up with one hand a dumbbell 
that weighed 525 pounds. And to make matters even tougher, that dumbbell had a 1.5 inch thick bar. Now that's more of a testament to Louis Sear's grip strength. Sear also could hoist up, I think exaggerated, partial deadlift poundages of over a thousand pounds. Now he did this utilizing a hand and thigh method. In other words, standing up in a near erect position. He was holding a handle attached to the weight below and he would bump that handle upward along the thigh. Whatever, there does not appear to be any credible verification again of Sears poundages. Louis Sear mastered some odd lifts that Anderson did not. For instance, the one finger pull of 553 pounds. He did that in Montreal before a large crowd. He was able to resist the pull of four horses, two pulling on each arm. And he could do a crucifix lift, standing up, arms out at his side. One arm is holding 97 pounds, a dumbbell, and the other arm 88 pounds. Paul Anderson never did that to my knowledge. Louis Sear could walk holding on one arm on his bicep four 50 pound plates, total 200 pounds. Anderson relied pretty much on the standard dumbbell and barbell lifts. Although he did the occasional odd stunt, such as picking up the front end of a car. Both Anderson and Louis Sear utilized their abilities in other competitions. For instance, both were wrestlers, although Anderson's gigs were more for show, if you recall professional wrestling during the 1950s. Louis Sear, on the other hand, took on one Edouard Beaupre. Beaupre stood seven feet, eight inches and he weighed 365 pounds. And from what I've read, uh, the match was serious. Louis Sear won. Paul Anderson, however, boxed professionally. His record, however, was dismal. Not that he was beaten. He simply ran out of gas. Now, if greatest, as opposed to strongest, was what we're trying to determine, then Louis Sear would be the clear winner. His reputation was built when the Western world was undergoing tremendous growth and prosperity and optimism, and Sear and his feats represented the body's metaphor of all that. Anderson, coming of age following two world wars and a great economic depression, never received Louis Sear's acclaim. For instance, when Louis Sear was recognized throughout the world and fated by even Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, all Anderson got after his tremendous Olympic victory against the Soviet Union was a short chat with Vice President Richard Nixon. But Determining who is the strongest, not the greatest, is our goal today. And E.T. thinks that Paul Anderson is the victor for single repetition lifting, not endurance. Although there exist reasons why E.T. may be wrong. What do you think? Write in your comments below. Hit that like or dislike figure and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.